The transition period in your manifestation journey is hard to process and even harder to talk about. Because although we feel something great is on the horizon, the environment just feels so uncomfortable. For me personally, I feared speaking on what felt like everything falling apart because I thought it would attract more things that I feared. And just recently, I received this download of reassurance that I know could potentially help you clear any storms within the mind that may arise on your journey to manifestation. Welcome to the Round and a Half Podcast, where we get real and then some. I am your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on different topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind, so we can accomplish our goals from a healed and open place together. So, let's get started. So, we know that the laws of the universe works mentally. Think of the mind as a remote control or the magic wand to your manifestations. So a man thinketh, so is he. It's simple. Whatever your mind is programmed to believe is mirrored back to you in your everyday life. Your lifestyle is a manifestation of a collection of thoughts and assumptions about who you are. Which is why, in the very beginning stages of starting my channel, it was important to me to train my thought habits up until this very point. No matter what, I woke up every day believing that I was a video creator able to reach thousands of people. And eventually, the world, or my world, mirrored itself as that. But what we don't talk about is that moment in between where you have reprogrammed your mind so strategically that your old lifestyle, an old programming is literally collapsing on top of itself. That's when the power of thought has to be so engraved in the mind because it's easy to create a dogma of affirmations when you're in this older timeline because you see everything that you want to change. Because that old life is still present, you're constantly being reminded of what you want to transition out of. But what about when even that slowly starts to disintegrate out of your life? When the person you want but you know is no longer good for you is gone. When the things that you've had to support yourself are no longer yours. When not only the bad things go away, but the good things somehow have disappeared as well because they no longer serve a purpose in your life or where you're headed. When this happens, are you still able to hold your ground and stand in your power and surrender to the change of the greater good for your life? Do you trust that things are working in your favor? And if so, how are you talking to yourself as these things are going on? Is fear and ego driving you to see it all as a mistake that you've made? Is the fear and ego forcing you to cling to and hold on to something that is no longer for you? Is the fear of the unknown driving you to find something or someone to blame? Is the disappointment of not receiving exactly what you want in the timing that you want it, building some type of resentment or lack of trust that something better is actually on the horizon. I realize how far away I was from my manifestations in the mind because of the ways that I spoke to myself. Because although I knew what I wanted, I forgot how easy it was for my mind to be anxious and full of fear, full of worry and anxiety. When you're someone like me that can easily think about the worst possible outcome, you assume you're doing it for your protection. So we think about the worst possible outcome to brace ourselves because we don't like to be surprised. We like to know everything. I realized that I was putting more energy into the outcome that I didn't want it more than the outcome that I did. And this attention to detail of all of the wrong things was not serving me. So I'd like to give you a task. Uh, for the next three days, pay attention to your thoughts when things don't go as planned. Are you flexible with your manifestations? Are you flexible in the mind enough to accept different outcomes? You'll start to see the ways that you talk to yourself in the event that things don't necessarily go your way or when someone makes a mistake or someone cuts you off in the road or you have this fear. How quick are you able to 
dwell in the negative or speak on fear or even have thoughts of an undesirable outcome. For me, I did it so fast and so many times that I, 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 it was disgusting. And that's just my take on it because I wanted so many things to happen for me. And when I realized that I was standing in my own way on a subatomic level, everything kind of changed for me. When you realize that your words, the ways that you think, are your power, you really take into account all of the things that you're digesting, all of the things that you're telling yourself. And I'm starting to do this now where anxiety, fear, worry, because it's so natural for me, I'm trying to find ways I can push past that way of thinking because it's so small. And if I say I want big things, I have to be okay with different or bigger outcomes. I think I just reached a barrier within the mind and if it's something that you also do, unfortunately, maybe this could be the very video that catapults you into a swift manifestation um, of whatever it is you want, you know. I had to stop talking myself out of the things that I wanted or I had to stop talking myself out of an unlimited power source. If I keep training my mind to only invest my thoughts on the negative outcomes, I'm just kind of confusing my mind, my body, and my spirit. A few weeks back, I was in this mental and emotional storm because, I don't know, have you ever been just in a period of hard work that you depend on that hard work resulting in some type of acknowledgement or promotion, but instead it leaves you empty handed and you can blame it on my ego or whatever, but I put my schedule at the disposal of this entity to be of service to them and where my expertise were needed. And when there was an opportunity for growth, it went to someone else. And at first I felt used and it was a repeated cycle for me that has always happened to me over the years. And it feels like when they need you, they need you. They love to push you and they see you as this person of authority, but when it's time for the title of leadership, they will find any reason why someone younger or more pale or whatever is a better choice. At first, a wave of exhaustion hit me, like it really hit me because I was just so focused on the work and being of service that I didn't even perceive myself to really be tired. It's like I was for such a long time not really listening to myself or to my body because I wanted people to know that they were supportive and I also like being helpful. Unfortunately, I started to experience this wave of exhaustion and just feeling like even the hard work that I do bring to the table was of lesser value. And for a moment, I almost allowed an entity who genuinely, not necessarily feared my power, but is so taken aback by my potential or who I could become, that they almost convinced me that it didn't exist. There was a night a few weeks back that I just needed to take a drive to process it all and just sit in my confusion because even the things that I was telling my partner, he knew why, you know, things didn't work out for me because he understands the bigger picture in my life. But there's sometimes there's certain things that happen. There's certain disappointments that happen that really leave you confused. And when you've invested so many years um, making yourself available to a certain thing, you would hope that there's some type of growth or some type of exchange where people are able to acknowledge the amount that you're dedicating to a certain thing. But when that happens to everyone else but you, everyone that doesn't look like you, it's really the straw that broke the camel's back for me. And for so long, if that was the one opportunity of hope that I had for this situation that I was in, it 
remove myself from any hope. It was like a clear, closed door for me. And I just had to sit in it. I just didn't understand at the time why my hard work didn't matter. Why, unfortunately, the seeds that I had sown were not prospering in that sector that I had invested so many years in. And I had to park my car because I was getting just hot. And I just decided to wait a while. And I really started to pray for like protection because I felt like these were little mini spiritual attacks that kept coming to me because of the work of my, you know, purpose here, the work that I was trying to do, maybe on social media, on YouTube. And I realized in this prayer of protection how much I was telling myself and other people that this opportunity will follow through and I'm just waiting for this thing and when it comes I'll be in a more comfortable position to have more structure and more free time to do x y and z so much was dependent on this thing to follow through or so I thought And so the fact that I literally have no foresight of what will happen next, I just really needed covering, you know, I was so dependent on that working out for me and that it was obvious that it was going to happen for me because of things that were told. But when it didn't, my mind just didn't process anything outside of that and it left me very afraid because I thought if I was a good steward, my father would be with me and would make sure that I was untouched or that I would have what I needed. And I had this thought of like God sending his son and all of the trials and the dangers that he encountered on that journey. And there are certain things that God can't protect us from because it's something required to fulfill the prophecy of our lives. And a lot of the times in the eye of the storm, we get offended. I thought if I stayed with my father, the storms would pass me, not put me in the center of it. And when it all goes down, we have to armor ourselves with the mind that can conquer any doubt in the midst of the storm. I think that is where the power of manifestation lies. In the storm, are you able to anchor your mind in faith that every door that has closed every missed opportunity everything that is not ours is simply not for us to have and the things that we want and the true desires of our heart are on its way to us but because we don't necessarily know what it looks like we don't understand all of the moving parts we could easily mistake the things falling into place for our manifestations to come to our lives completely falling apart and it's not the case like I didn't die I'm I'm still here I still obviously have work to do you know God is not done with me yet so why was I so stuck on this one possibility happening for me Um, I think it's just so funny that the ego of the mind really thinks that it has it all figured out. It, it knows what it wants, but it also thinks it knows how exactly it's going to happen. And I could not picture in a thousand years things happening the way that they are. I hoped it would, but the ways that things happen and the little many things that fell apart all for me to be able to do this, I did not picture it going this way at all. And I'm not mad at it. There were moments where I was a little bit mad at myself thinking that I had control over different outcomes, but to be realistic... Nothing was in my hands. That's what I asked for when I asked for the things that I want to kind of release things and allow God to do what he needs to do so that his will be done. So I'm still trying to develop real authentic trust that what I want is on its way to me the things that I want are already mine and I can't fixate on how things are coming together because that takes away from 
my mind focusing on the things that I actually want. The amount of times or the amount of hours that I spent ruminating on why certain things didn't happen for me or why I wasn't chosen or why this one specific thing that is not even alignment with my true purpose didn't work out for me. The things that I told myself, the overthinking that I did is all very powerful. I'm a powerful overthinker. If I just channeled that energy into thinking of the best possible outcome or that or if I shifted my gears of overthinking into just belief that everything was already mine and everything will work out for my greater good, I wonder how far along I would be. I really needed to catch myself. It took me going through this specific thing or this specific phase. It's really not a big deal, but it's very important for my heart posture to see this flaw because I was standing in the way of a lot of things happening for me because of all of the things wrong that I decided to focus on. Although I want a lot of things, a lot of things do not belong to me and I have to be able to release it from my grasp and open my hands to what actually is. It's like I need to be in the energy of receiving I've done so much giving I've done so much catering to I've done so much accommodating for so many people I'm holding on to all of these things hoping that it has me and when time reveals that it doesn't and that it never did I still have this thing where it just makes me so mad right and I'm like why can't this work out for me instead of just like okay opening myself up to what actually could be for me and realizing that I have no idea how it's going to come but if I never open my hands to it it'll never come for real you know I I, I hope that that makes sense it's something that I'm still in the process of like moving upward with because this all is very recent for me so if you're in a point in your life where the disappointment is clouding your better judgment of the entire situation I want you to know that you need to let that go let it go it wasn't yours the relationship didn't work out your husband is not supposed to be making you cry I like let it go although you have free will when you decide to move in alignment with your purpose there are things so outside of your power that if you release yourself to it and submit to that power it'll give you something greater than your wildest dreams in the smallness of our minds I know that we're thinking large when we think about our dreams I know that we are training ourselves to want more to ask for more right but we haven't even experienced all of the good things that we're going to experience in our lives yet and when we claim that we have it all figured out and when we claim we want this thing we could be potentially missing an opportunity for us to get the greatest thing that we didn't even know we needed and I think I had to release to open myself up to that fact although I want to know a lot of things I do not know a lot of things and the truth of that allows me to be open for more so in conclusion when I decided to work for my father I decided in like a cover letter form that I wanted to do more inner work than outer work and I was hired there's no greater opportunity for me than one that aligns others to see the power that they have at their disposal to manifest their desires. There is no amount of luck, hard work, or determination that can shake a divine plan. With this reassuring truth, I know that I have no other important task than the one that I'm doing right now. I want you to know that where you are is exactly where you need to be. There is no forcing yourself into the next step. 
Sometimes we just have to allow time and the steps that we are already taking to be the testimony for the divine plan for our lives. Until you receive clear instructions to do something else, know that the work that you're doing now is enough. And I struggle with that because of how I am and how my mind works. I'm always quick to find another task. I'm always quick to find another job. I force myself to stand in the presence of another person's yes instead of standing and waiting on God's yes for me because I fear I'm going to miss my mark. Sometimes, although we can't see it, the work itself is laying a path, maybe not even for you, but for others. If you're going forward and you feel like you can't see the path ahead, maybe it's because you're moving at such a rapid pace in spirit or because you can't even see it that the path that is being made out is so new, it's going to be in service to others behind you. And to be fair, we can't clock God's steps. We don't know what's next. And that's where trust has to kind of kick in. I hope this all made sense because I know how lonely it can feel. I know how lonely the journey can feel, especially when you feel like you're the only one doing the specific thing that you're doing. You really don't have a lot of mentorship. You just are in hopes that it all is going to work out. I have a feeling that it's going to get really good for you. And when it does, come back and tell me all about it. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, because it's moments like this where it's like there's not really much going on. You're in hopes for something good. Yeah, certain things are falling apart. But when you realize that it's for a bigger picture, um, we just kind of have to sit and wait for whatever that is. So I just want you to know that I'm also in that waiting room with you, keeping my eye on this prize of obedience because I don't have any other task to do but this. So I hope with what I shared, it is of service to you. I hope that you feel a little less alone and a little more seen. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for making it to this far in the video. Um, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have anything that resonates. I'm sure other people would love to read it. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri. Um, and also, just recently, I met a viewer the other day. Her name is Maya. Hey, girl. It was so nice meeting her. I love it when I get to cross paths with just people that I feel like God brings into my life to give me that little reassurance and give me that nudge. It was such a blessing to meet her. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. Had a lovely time talking to you. Um, and yeah, hope to see you guys in my next one. Bye.